Entranced to Serenity, streaming now on all platforms. See you there. What's the difference between Christianity and Islam? Do they believe the same God? Do they have the same values? Today we're going to find out by watching the main differences between Christianity and Islam. Let's check it out. Islam and Christianity are two of the world's biggest religions. Their histories begin in exactly the same place, starting in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. Also, Islam and Christianity, along with Judaism, are known as Abrahamic faiths, meaning that they all believe that the biblical prophet Abraham was one of the original fathers of having these faiths delivered to humanity. However, there are several key differences between these two religions that I'll be exploring in this episode. Episode. Welcome to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and yeah, we're exploring the world of religion again. And this time we're looking at the differences between Islam and Christianity. So if you are either Christian or Muslim, give this video a big thumbs up, or if you just love learning in general, also hit that like button on this video. And if this is your first time here at FTD Facts, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to be notified of future videos like this. Okay, so let's begin. We got a lot to talk about in this episode. When we first look at Christianity, Christianity consists of people who believe in the deity Jesus Christ. Christians, generally speaking, believe Christ is the Son of God and walked on earth as the incarnate form of God, the Father. So in other words, they believe Believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. Islam is made up of individuals who believe in the deity Allah, which is just the Arabic word for God. They believe that Allah's teachings were recorded word for word by God's last prophet named Muhammad. Currently, Islam is the second largest religion in the entire world after Christianity. And based on the latest estimates, the current global population of Christianity sits at 2.3 billion followers, which is 31% of the total population population of the world. Islam follows behind at 1.8 billion followers, which works out to be approximately 24% of the entire global population. So as you can see, these two religions, of course, have played a huge role in shaping what we know to be human history. Because look at this, this is half of the population here fall in between these two religions. Now, when we look at when these two religions were formed as organized religions, Islam takes us back to 610 to 622 CE. Christianity, on the other hand, was established as an organized religion in 28 to 33 CE, which was centuries before Islam. So we hear the terms Christian, Christianity, and all of that. So what does Christian actually mean? If someone calls himself a Christian, what are they saying? Well, Christian simply means a believer in Christianity, which is someone that follows the teachings of Christ. Very simple. Now, Islam means submission to the will of God. And those who submit to the will of God are called Muslims. When it comes to the place of worship, where do Christians go to worship? Well, of course, we know of churches. There's also chapels, cathedrals, basilicas, as well as Christians are allowed to worship in homes and any other living spaces. Muslims worship at mosques, aka masjids, and any other place considered clean by Islamic standards. So it's pretty open. There's not necessarily a specific place that you have to go to worship. Both of these religions are pretty open. One of the main differences between these religions is the doctrine of the Trinity. The Trinity or the Godhead is one of the core beliefs of Christianity and it states that there is one God who has three manifestations, the Father, the Son, as well as the Holy Spirit. And I kind of like to use this example, it's not really the best, but you got to think of it like a, a corporation who has three founders. And all of the three founders have different roles, but under the same umbrella corporation. So in this case, it would be like God, corporation, and then we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit, which is kind of equally all God. That's kind of how I try to wrap my brain around it, and hopefully that made sense for you. But Muslims, however, believe that they are the ones that practice true monotheism, which means that they do not accept the doctrine of the Trinity because how can three be one? And the core belief of Islam is that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. And it's a simple concept. There's just Allah, that's it. When it comes to the differences between the scriptures in Christianity and Islam. That's an interesting thing because whenever you said how can three be one, 
it just reminds me of that we are all one. And that's kind of the sense of the true sense of Christianity where how they just said Jesus is God, but also we are all God. It's kind of like we've been researching and doing a lot of research on Hinduism and uh, Vedanta and different sects of Hinduism. And they believe that as well. So the true sense of Christianity in my interpretation is that we truly are all gods, but it got misinterpreted over time. So whenever it says, how can three be one? It's we're all one in that sense. So, you know, just something to think about. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. So in the beginning, he said that both religions start with the story of Adam and Eve, which I had no idea. I thought that was just Christianity. Did you know that? That yeah, Islam I did know had that. that as well. Okay, I I always thought that was just a Christian because thing. even in Islam, um, they they believe a lot of the same things that Christians believe. So, in a lot of religions, they recognize Jesus as a prophet. I believe Islam. Mm. I could be wrong, but I believe Islam does recognize Jesus as a prophet. They just don't believe in him as so essentially, yeah. God or the Son of God, which, Christ figure. Yeah, technically we all are in my own opinion so yeah so we'll listen a little more but the way i see the holy trinity of course i grew up christian and i still do have a lot of christian beliefs but i have a lot of lot of beliefs with all religions mm, a lot of a spiritual lot of beliefs <laughs> let's just listen more. okay yeah um, the holy book in christianity of course is the bible and it's said to be the inspired word of god this means different things to different people but Pretty much, it means that Christians believe that the books of the Bible are written by many people over a span of 1,500 years, and those people were guided by the Spirit of God through divine inspiration. And these writings came through various different forms. You know, in the Bible, there's songs, there's poetry, there's stories, there's genealogies. And in these writings, we see personal expressions of human beings working side by side with God. Now, when we look at the holy book of Islam, the Quran, it is said to be the word of God and it was dictated to Muhammad and it was written down word for word without any sort of personal expression or any other humanness, if you will, added to the writings. The most true reading of the Quran has to be in its original Arabic language because translating it into other languages can also take away from the interpretation of the Quran. So that's where a lot of times we get a little bit of confusion when it comes to the scriptures of the Quran. People are like, no, but in the original Arabic, it means this. But if you translate it in English or another language, there's not necessarily a direct translation, so some of the context may be lost. So that's what they say if you want to get the most out of reading the Quran, learn some Arabic, or at least find somebody that knows Arabic and is very versed in the Quran to help you out. Okay, so the next difference I'm looking at is the difference in the prophets. So in the Quran, the prophet Abraham was known as the beloved servant of God. And because of Abraham's devotion to God, God made many of Abraham's descendants prophets. Now the story of the prophet Abraham being commanded to sacrifice his own son Isaac is known in both Christianity and Islam. In Islam, that son, however, who God told Abraham to sacrifice is Ishmael. And it was through his lineage that Islam was established through the prophet Muhammad. In Christianity, the son that Abraham was told to sacrifice was his son Isaac. And through the line of Isaac comes many prophets like Jacob, Joseph, Moses, David, King Solomon, and of course, Jesus Christ. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the differences in the beliefs of Jesus Christ in both of their religions. In Islam, Muslims accept that Jesus of Nazareth did in fact exist and that he was born of the Virgin Mary. But Islam also believes that Jesus was simply another prophet equal to other prophets before him. Muslims believe that Muhammad is a final messenger and is superior to all other previous prophets that came before him. In the Christian faith, they believe that Jesus is the Son of God, which makes him equal to God. And before he came to earth as a man, he was accepted as the second person of the Trinity and another title that Jesus is given in Christianity before he came to live on the earth as a man is the Word of God and then the Word of God 
came down to live on earth in human flesh. Islam doesn't believe in the idea that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. They believe that God spared him from that. In the Christian faith, God sacrificing his son Jesus on the cross is actually the focal point of the faith because without that, the world would remain hopeless, just doomed, humanity done. So that leads me to the next difference I want to highlight. What are the differences between the ideas of salvation in both of these religions? Well, Islam teaches that salvation is based on working to achieve it. So how it works is like this. A Muslim must keep the five pillars of Islam. They have to confess the Shahada, which is that there is no God but Allah, as well as Muhammad is his prophet. And generally speaking, when Muslims pray, they are to pray towards Mecca five times a day. They must also fast during the daylight hours of the month of Ramadan. They're also required to give money to the poor, help out people who are in need, and make a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their life. Islam teaches that the Day of Judgment will involve people's good deeds and bad deeds being weighed side by side to see, okay, did the good deeds outweigh the bad deeds. Christianity has a much different concept of salvation and it teaches that a person is saved by the gift of God which is through accepting the death of Jesus Christ through faith in him. So therefore you're no longer required to do a bunch of different good works to be accepted by God and be saved but rather you're just saved through faith in Jesus and because you're saved you just naturally want to now do good works because yeah who doesn't want to help out their fellow man and just be a good person in general. We're coming down to the end of this episode and there's a couple things that I want to take a look at. First of all is the clergy, the different clergy in the two religions. Islam has imams and they are the ones that lead the congregational prayers in the mosques. They also have sheikhs, malana, mullahs and muftis in their religion. In Christianity, there are priests, bishops, ministers, monks, as well as nuns as seen as official clergy. And what are some of the holy days that these religions recognize? Christianity recognizes probably the biggest celebration in the world, Christmas, which celebrates the birth of Jesus. There's also Good Friday, which celebrates the death of Jesus. And depending on which denomination of Christianity you fall into, Sunday or Saturday is viewed as the day of rest or the Sabbath. Another holy day for Christians is Easter, which celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for Catholic Christians, they celebrate Lent, which is a season of 40 days, but it doesn't count Sundays. And this begins on a day called Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday. And Catholic Christians also celebrate different saint feast days. Islam, of course, has their fair share of celebrations, but officially not as much as Christianity. There's the month of Ramadan, which is a month of fasting. There's Eid al-Adha, which is the Feast of the Sacrifice, and Eid al-Fatir, which is a festival at the end of Ramadan. Now I've gotten to the final difference that I want to explore in this episode. So similar to Judaism, Islam tends to have stricter guidelines or rules than Christianity. Now in modern Christianity, most of the hardline rules of the Old Testament are more so related to Judaism now, and many of the rules found in the New Testament are sort of not as harsh as the Old Testament. For example, most Christians freely eat whatever they choose, including pork and foods that are not blessed by religious leaders. But this is something that Muslims and Jews do under the halal and kosher diet rule. So a lot of the ancient traditions related to their dietary laws as well as living laws still remain alive today. So that concludes this episode on the differences between Islam and Christianity. All right, so that was actually really interesting, really insightful. It's just really cool to look at the different religions and and see where they all came from because I knew that Christianity and Islam did have a lot of similarities, but I didn't know to that extent, actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that the entire thing was actually almost the same until it split with Ishmael and Isaac. Yeah, so basically so. it said that Islam, the sacrificed son, his name was Ishmael, mm -hmm. and then in Christianity, the son's name is Isaac, yep. and then they both have the different descendants. Yeah, so that was really interesting to watch because it's like you can see that all religions essentially come from the same thing, which is something that I've always been saying a lot, and I know that you know that's the case, but again, it's just so cool to see it and interesting because what I believe is that everyone is worshiping the same religion and 
I tend to believe what they say in Vedanta and Hinduism, which is the most ancient religion, is that we are all one anyways. So, and there can only be God throughout everything. So everything that you're looking at is God. So how could Jesus, whose real name was Yeshua, how could he not be the son of God? How could Muhammad not be the son of God? How could all of these people not be the son of God? Because you're saying and you're doing the same things because we are all a part of God. So God wouldn't be God without us because God is all that is. So once you truly realize that and understand that, then you can really move on and move forward and recognize your brothers as a part of God, as your brothers, which is what Jesus was really trying to teach people. Do unto your neighbors as you want to do unto you. Don't judge other people. Have forgiveness within your heart. Truly see people how they want to be seen. So once you view people in that light, then the whole reality in religion starts to come together into a positive thing for everybody. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, of course, know a lot more about Jesus than Muhammad, but I think both of them are definitely ascended masters and very, very highly spiritual and high, high level beings. And I really see it as at least Jesus was essentially definitely the son of God, as we all are, but he's basically what we all can be if we stay pure in our heart and stay pure in light and don't get caught too caught up in these emotions and all of these heavy things on earth and karma and all these things that kind of can take us away from our purity and our pure of heart and our pure light being, which is what we all truly are at the essence. And I know that that's a huge lesson that what Jesus was really trying to teach. And that's why he always said that, you know, we're all brothers and sisters. He never said that he's above a level above anyone else here on earth. He just wanted to represent what we all truly are when we just stay true in our heart, because we all are the sons and daughters of God and, and God, which of course gets a little more into Hinduism religion. But I'm sure it's quite similar for Muhammad teachings as well. And another interesting thing, I mean, I know there's lots and lots of different sects of Christianity, of course. I'm not really sure about Islam, but of course, there's Protestant, there's Catholic, there's Baptist, and they all have, you know, slightly different beliefs. Mormonism. Exactly. I mean, just, many, many, many. Just on and on. So it must be a Catholic thing because I know he mentioned in Christianity, if you just believe in Jesus, you're basically saved and ready to go to heaven, basically, which so I grew up Catholic and it was a little different, actually. So, yes, if you believe in Jesus, you are saved. But Catholic, you actually believe that if you have any sins on you that you didn't confess for when you die, you will not go to heaven. So it's a little bit strict in that hell. one. Yeah, exactly. So, or there was this thing, this kind of necklace that you could wear with this little rectangle on it. And if you prayed on it before bed and like, say you happen to die and, you know, in your sleep, is if you did that, it was another way of confessing your sins and you could also get to heaven or confess to the... Uh, th to the you know priest which is why we do your first confession in catholicism when you're in like second grade but so that was kind of interesting to me because i actually thought that was for all of cath or all of christianity that you had to confess your sins no must be a catholic thing that's 100 percent a catholic thing they don't do that in the baptist church at all hmm. you don't even go to they don't even have confessionals in there so that's wow. a catholic you know almost strange thing that they do where <laughs> yeah, but, you know but yeah guys thank you for watching i'm, I'm we're going to do more videos just exploring different religions so we're excited to actually just keep doing content and making content we fell in love with it we truly love doing it guys please check out my meditation album stream it on all platforms if you want to buy it it's on amazon music as well as itunes guys so Go ahead and buy it. Go ahead and stream it, add it to your playlist and enjoy it. So thank you for watching. Absolutely. If you like these videos, check out our other ones on the screen. We talk about a lot of different religions. You'll love those. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.